Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. Here's what's happening in sports jersey history on January 29th. We have some great jersey numbers. 3, 7, 77, 10, 11, and 22. We're going to talk about them and more. Uh, Bill Schaefer of the GUD is going to join us to tell about his favorite moment on the GUD history. And we'll have all that coming up in just one moment. My name's Darren Hayes, and I know you've heard me on the Pigskin Dispatch talking about football history for years. Well, now I'm on a new mission, a quest to find sports history in other sports as well as football by learning through the jerseys and the apparel and the gear that the players wore and the franchises supplied their teams. It's an educational trip, and I'm taking you with me day by day, player by player, uniform by uniform, the Sports Jersey Dispatch. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. As we always say, sports history is made each and every day, and that's a a true testament to the great athletes that uh, play the games. And we have some great numbers, the uniforms of some fantastic athletes that did some excellent events on January 29th, and we're going to share that history with you right now. Uh, The numbers of the jerseys are 3, 7, 77, 10, 11, and 22. Let's get right at it. January 29th, 1936. The first player selected to be inducted in the Baseball Hall of Famer announced is Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Honus Wagner, Christy Mathewson, and Walter Johnson. A Cobb, Mathewson, Johnson, and Wagner during their playing careers most likely never wore a number due to the fact that numbers on baseball uniforms were not required by the major league teams officially until the 1929 season. Now, Mathewson's last season was 1916, of course. Wagner finished up in 1917. Johnson last season was 1927, and Cobb completed his last year playing in 1928. Babe Ruth, as we know, famously donned the number three on his back for the New York Yankees. And why that is, from what I'm told, it's because of that was his spot in the batting order. He was the third batter. He wore number three. So very interesting indeed. January 29th, 1963, the Pro Football Hall of Fame announces its inaugural class of enshrinees, George Hallis, Jim Thorpe, and Red Grange. Ever hear of those three guys? Well, Hallis wore the number seven when he played. He, you know, he was also an owner and a coach, but he did play for the Decatur Staley's and for the Chicago Bears. Thorpe, well, he sported the norm number three for most of his career, and Red Grange famously ran down the field with a big old number 77 on his uni. January 29th, 1967, in Cooperstown, New York, the Baseball Hall of Fame elected Lloyd Wayner, who spent most of his career wearing number 10 on the Pittsburgh Pirates roster. And Branch Rickey was also elected to their Museum of Legends. Now, Wayner, he was the left-handed batting center fielder who not only played with the Pirates, but spent time in the organizations of the Boston Braves, Cincinnati Reds, Philadelphia Phillies, and the Brooklyn Dodgers as well. Branch Rickey, I know you probably heard that name before, he's most famously known after his playing days as being a very innovative executive in Major League Baseball. He's most well known for helping baseball break the color barrier by signing Jackie Robinson to a Brooklyn Dodgers contract as well as establishing the modern framework for the baseball farm sister. Mr. Ricky never had a uniform number that's recorded that we could find, but truly important, glad he's in the Hall of Fame. 
January 29th, 1984, at the NBA All-Star Game, number 11 of the Detroit Pistons, guard Isaiah Thomas, was voted as the game's most valuable player in an East victory, 154-145 over their West counterparts. Larry Nance Sr., number 22 of the Phoenix Suns, was the inaugural slam dunk competition winner as part of the All-Star festivities. Now, I want to make sure we capture some more history, and on my quest to be educated in sports history, here's one of my friends, Bill Schaefer, from the Gridiron Uniform Database. In a recent uh, conversation that I had with Bill and his partner, Tim Brulia, and uh, Larry Schmidt, who also does quite a bit of work and research on Gridiron Uniform Database, that's uh, gridiron-uniforms.com, Gridiron Uniform Database, G-U-D, is often referred to. And I posed uh, Bill the question in this little excerpt here of what his favorite Gridiron Uniform Database project that he is the most proud of, and here's his answer. You know, honestly, you know, being able to uh, attribute colors. Uh, by the way, going to give a shameless plug to our buddy Donovan Moore, uh, who runs what used to be called Color Works. I think it's called True Color now. Yeah. Um, somehow he had gotten a hold of a way to uh, give the Pantone squares uh, of the correct colors, uh, even to teams back into the 20s. And wow. being able, being able to, you know, we can see a picture, we can see the uh, the design template of a jersey from the 1920s, but if it's just black and white, all as an artist, all I'm capable of making is a black and white version of that template. Without Donovan to have those color palettes for us and say, oh yeah, the Cleveland Bulldogs were like cream and burgundy. Well, I can look at the template and say, oh, okay, that's the burgundy area, that's the cream area. And so we can actually colorize a an image that nobody has seen in color in, you know, 100 years. And, and I think that's that's really cool. Um, the A close second though, uh, you guys have already mentioned, the fact that we've been able to do the game by game matchups so you know, if if my dad's birth, my dad was born in March of 1945. They didn't play football in March, but say for instance, uh, you know, he was born on I don't know September 23rd, and you can look at September 23rd, 1945. Oh my gosh, those were the football games on the day my dad was born. You know, yeah. just, just being able to look and see a historical reference that. You know, the normal layperson football fan, there there isn't many color videos out there from the 40s and 50s. But to be able to, you know, have somewhere to go and actually see in color uh, what everything looked like back then, I, I still think that that's got to be one of the high points for the site. Now that was uh, some great answers by Bill, Tim, and Larry, uh, Bill in this case. And we have the uh, whole beginning of that interview is going to be coming out on Pigskin Dispatch, our sister uh, podcast and sister website, pigskindispatch.com. And we're going to be ha- airing that in the next couple of weeks. But we're going to be having some of these little excerpts of things that we didn't include in the Pigskin Dispatch podcast. We're going to be putting at the ends of some of these uh, daily jersey numbers on sports jersey dispatch podcast so a uh, very special thanks to, to bill schaefer and the whole gud team uh, also we want to thank uh, the information we got from for the following brilliant sites on this day dot sports the sports references family of websites the hockey the baseball the pro football and baseball and also their stat head uh, arm that they have there stathead.com some great uh, numbers and some great information on all those sites and of course newspapers.com where we got some additional information on these great athletes and stories also like to thank our, our musician friends uh, Mike Monroe and Gene Monroe coming up with that great uh, raggae riff we had in the beginning of the show we're going to be playing that from time to time and of course uh, coming up here in a second you're going to hear at the end credits it's going to be Jason Neff with his great uh, February 3rd tune and uh, he, Jason has some other melodies that we're playing under the tones of uh, some of the, our talking like we hear right now so Jason Neff Gene and Mike Monroe thank you very much for your music and sharing uh, that and your great talents with us here on the podcast. 
We'd also like to thank you, the listeners, for joining us today. If you have any feedback, you can reach us at pigskindispatch at gmail.com. We're on Twitter, at Pigskin Dispatch. Facebook, we have the Pigskin Dispatch Facebook page. And you can also find us on uh, Reddit quite a bit. We are in the sports history section. We post as Pigskin Dispatch, of course. And on LinkedIn, we are under Darren Hayes, under my private label. You can uh, contact us there and check out some of our posts. We appreciate you all. I hope you'll join us back again tomorrow and on the Pig skin dispatch podcast uh, and both those websites and don't forget orville mulligan the great audio drama make sure you check out those if you haven't and uh see how you think about that and give us feedback on all those we greatly appreciate you till tomorrow everybody have a great sports history day sorry but my pitching coach just called time out he's coming out to the mound i think i'm going to get yanked for a reliever we'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on sports jersey dispatch podcast we invite you to check out our websites jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com not only see the daily sports history but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games find us on pigskin dispatch it's also on social media outlets of facebook Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876 including t-shirts long sleeve shirts phone cases mugs blankets pillows towels and even shower curtains go to sportshistorynetwork.com row number one for access to the full row one catalog and for gallery prints and gift items plus get a 15 percent discount off all prints on the row one pictorum gallery with coupon code shn15 follow the link on the show notes